step into the voting booth or fill out your ballot at the kitchen table, what are the most important issues on your mind? Free speech, the economy, equity in our communities, health care, education. What is the most important thing you consider when voting for the candidates on the ballot in your election? Any one of these issues is important. They build the foundation of our communities. But did you know, sometimes when we hear people say our vote doesn't mean anything, there might be some truth to that. In July 2020, Sandra Nisbell of the University of Rochester released an article exploring how corporate money and politics threatens our democracy. Or does it? In the article, Nisbell wrote, In 2010, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Citizens United v. Federal Election Commissions that companies and labor unions enjoy the same right to political speech as individuals. Many restrictions on money in American politics went out the window. Today, super PACs are funded in large part by dominant corporations, their shareholders, and powerful unions. Nispel goes on to explore how many say this influx in large sums of money into politics damages trust in government, suppresses voter turnout, and puts corporate interests first, resulting in corruption. The findings in the article showed that 80% of the public believed campaign finance laws, as they are today, lead to corruption. In 2020, voters in Oregon passed Measure 107 by 78% in support of legislation that would allow laws requiring limits on the amount of funding a candidate could receive from corporate donors or PACs. But the State House has yet to pass any laws focused on leveling the playing field. Does our vote really count? Patrick Starnes believes that it does. And here's what he's had to say on the subject over the years. We're uh, the only candidate who's not accepting corporate money or PAC money, and we've set a limit of $1,000 per person for our campaign because we have to role model campaign finance reform in order to change it. Because you'll see that campaign finance reform is sort of the center of the web on almost any issue, you know, and then the sell, this, all these, this, so the volunteering and working and contributing, and that goes with politics too. You can't just vote, right? You have to vote with your dollars. You have to vote with your check, you know, checkbook. And and, and if you don't, there's a vacuum. And guess who shows up? That's right. The corporations, the special interest packs, and that's why we're trying to role model because. We don't need to just have a different person in the governor's office. We need a systemic change. And I think Democrats and Oregonians are ready for this systemic change because they just voted with almost 80% to get big money out of politics. So that's a great start. And we helped make that happen in 2018 by getting Governor Brown to make it a priority. And And then in 2019, the session, I went and met with almost all 90 members, and it was almost unanimous. Only five people voted to not refer that to the voter. Patrick Starnes is the one candidate working to eradicate corporate corruption from our elections. In fact, this is his number one priority. He feels so passionately about the need for campaign finance reform that he's dedicated his first 100 days to fixing the problem at the state level. This is just one of Patrick's many planned projects, and it's the one piece that, if fixed, could be the most effective change we've seen in Oregon in decades. Elect Patrick Starnes in November 22 as Oregon's next governor. Stand, Stand by me. Stand by me. Stand by me.